Have you ever watched a colleague breeze through Excel looking like a real expert and you feeling a bit jealous, wishing you could do the same? Well, you don't have to worry anymore because in this video I will show you the most common mistakes that beginners make and how to fix them so that you can also look like a pro. You'll learn the 10 key formulas and functions that will make your spreadsheets look amazing to make advanced analysis and save you tons of time by working more efficiently. Before we get into the more advanced formulas and type savers, the first part you need to learn are some functions to make your Excel sheets go from a bit basic and chaotic to clear and informative. The first two are my so-called pillars of Excel. So that is when you're working for yourself, tracking stuff, want to fill in stuff, or when you have sheets for other people that also need some easy access to your sheets. So the first part that is crucial to know is data formatting. So that is used when you want to have predefined alternatives that you can enter in an Excel cell. So for example, here for the status, we can mark all of these cells. We can go into data validation and then you can see the validation criteria. So this is what you will put into the box. I usually do a list and we can put in not started, ongoing, and then finished. So this will then be the choices that we have in these cells now. So when Maria has started with prepping page one of the report, she can put this as ongoing. And then we can change the status of all the other tasks as well. So this is not started, for example. The second part to creating really good trackers like this is conditional formatting. So that you have in the home tab and here you have conditional formatting. So for this specific examples, we would want the not started ones as red, ongoing ones maybe as a light green and the finished one as a dark green. So you can go into conditional formatting and then highlight cell rules and then equal to, because in equal to we can enter a text. So every cell that has data that is same as not started, we can make that this default option. Then we can do this again. There are loads of different ways to use conditional formatting. So for example, in this case, we have another tracker where we have the average temperature in Stockholm in degrees Celsius. And then we can mark all of this data and make it more visual. So we can do the pre-made color scales. So for example, this one, then that will mark the highest values, the darkest colors. So here we can see that, oh, July is the warmest month and then August and then June. And then you can see very visually which month is the warmest one. And you can do this with all types of data where you have a lot of data and quickly want to see where are the highest values and where are the lowest values. Let's continue with a third tip and that is a bit cleaning up our sheets. So let's say we want to calculate the average price tickets in January. We do the total sales in January divided by number of sales. And we drag that for everyone. And now we can see that because Emma made no sales in January, this becomes an error, a division with zero error, which is one of the most common errors that you get. And this works with every type of error. So we will enter an if error function. So before this formula, we enter if error, and then a parenthesis. So here we check if this calculation is an error, then we can enter what va value should we put instead of the error. So in this example, we just want a zero. There we go. We drag this formula to all of the boxes and then we get a zero instead of this very ugly value. Another common thing that can happen is that you get a lot of decimals when doing calculations. So for the average ticket price in February, we do total sales in February and we see, oh my God, we can't have all of these decimals. So even if we turn this down, it's still a very off number. So we can very quickly and easily fix that so that our data is clean and nice. And how we do that is with a round function. So we write round and then in parentheses and then our calculation. And then we write, write how many number of digits that it should equate to. So if we want the closest integer, we just put zero. And then this becomes the closest integer and it works for all of them. 
And we can also put it to the closest hundreds. Then you might write minus 2. Then you get 1,800 and 700 there. So this cleans up these very large numbers so that they're easy, more easy to look at. Imagine that these were a million number, then that would help a lot. Another very quick tip to clean up this page very quickly. Instead of using the paint bucket tool, you're doing it white for everything. You can just go into the view tab and uncheck grid lines. So then only the grid lines that you have entered will stay there. Okay, so this next part are some really amazing time savers that are super simple, that, but that will save you tons of time. And this first one I feel so embarrassed about because it took me five years as a consultant before I realized that this existed. But when I found it out, I was like, well, duh, obviously. So when you go into this view tab, you can open a new window. So then you suddenly have two versions of the same Excel file. So now I'm only recording one screen, but you can put this on your separate screens and then very easily just compare data with each other in the same Excel file. If you already knew this, then sorry for stating the obvious, but if you didn't know this, bam, I now saved you hours of time when you're copying and pasting and adding formulas between different tabs. This also works in PowerPoint too, actually. So that's really nice. So now when we have these two tabs open, we can go back and see that, oh my God, this temperature graph is in the wrong order than this temperature graph that I have. But fear not, there's an easy hack. So you can mark all of the data, you copy it. And when you go into this separate tab, you can paste as transpose. So then you can enter the data in the other direction. So if it is in the rows, you can enter it as a column and the opposite way around. So this special paste special is really good actually, because now also when you enter transpose, we got all of the formatting of the colors with us, but maybe we don't want that. Then we can click paste special. So then we have all these options that we can use when pasting data from one page to another. So in this case, maybe we just want the values and we want to transpose it. So then we do go, don't get the formatting, we only get the values, but we get them transposed. This is also another great time saver. So when you want to drag a date out, so here you have work week, so maybe this is an, a vacation tracker or something like that. And when you drag this out, you get, of course, every date, but we don't want the weekend days because we don't work during weekends. So let's back. And then instead of dragging with our left mouse clicker, we drag it out with the right one. So then we have all of these options where we can fill series, formatting, without formatting, days, weekdays, months and years. So then we can fill in only the weekdays. So then it automatically skips the weekend part. This next part is what will take you from basic to advanced in Excel in just a couple of minutes. And this is basically what you use when you handle large amount of data. So let's go into these bad examples. So let's say that we have all of this data here and then we start working on it in the same tab. A lot of people just do sales in USA, so you get a plus. And then you find all of the USA data, add that up, etc., etc. And then you have some kind of summary. And there's a lot of problems with this because first of all, you're hard coding the data into this because if we were in some way to sort this data, let's add a sort a filter function for this and sort from largest to smallest then this number changes. So you can't change anything in this data when you've hard coded it into here. Second of all, this works when you have such a small amount of data like this, but if you have an Excel sheet that is thousand rows long, then this is not gonna work because you don't have the time to manually go in to look up all the USA numbers, for example. Also, when you start making additions, like for example, you want to check, oh, how much has Anthony made in total sales? Then you get a percentage of what he has done or for example how many sales did Andrea do in January and February and then you get up with all of these random data points that you have no idea what they mean and it will make your file super messy. So the first step is that we're gonna 
do a new sheet. We're going to name that input. And then we're going to put all of this data from over there into the input tab instead. So we have all of the input data in a separate tab. And then we have a separate tab where we put the output. So that is the nice tables and the calculations that you do. It will be very clear and easy to look at what it is that you've done. Now when we have this template here, there are basically only two formulas that you need to enter all types of data from an input tab into here to make it nice and flexible so that you can sort in the input tab without ruining anything in the output tab. So the first formula that you need to know is the sum ifs. Sum ifs. And then in this case, we want to find the number of sales in January that each person has made. So first we need to find the sum range, which is the number of sales in January. So this is over here number of sales in January. Then we want to find out where the person is that did it, which is then in the person column. And then we want to find the criteria, which is then that it is Emily's sales. So then we press enter and we have that Emily made 10 sales in January. Then let's drag this out to the other people, make sure to lock the ranges before we because we never want the ranges to move and then drag these down and then we can see that the top four made 10 sales and Isabella made nine. Top four did 10 sales and Isabella did nine. So if we sort this in any other way we sort this by country instead. This data doesn't change at all. And then the second formula that you need is the X lookup. X lookup. You've probably heard about VLOOKUP or index match, and XLOOKUP is basically the merge of these two in the best way possible to make it as simple as possible ever. So this is a bit simpler. So lookup value, we want to look for Emily in the array, which we find then in input. We want to find look in this row. Where do we have Emily among the employees? And then we want the return array so then we want the country that she has made her sales in. And then let's not forget the if not found part. Let's just write in not found. And then to the last one that we want to have an exact match. Otherwise this formula can do a little bit what it wants. But we want an exact match. We want to look for this Emily name specifically. Okay, cool. So then going back here, we can see that Emily is based in Sweden. I really like that I chose almost the same name and in Sweden, but not my actual name. Well done, Emily. Um, and then we can drag this out to the others as well. So we want this one to move downwards when we drag it down. So we put that loose and then we lock this one and lock this one and have these ones the same. So then we can see what country they reside in. Let's look at Isabella, she should be in Sweden. Isabella is in Sweden, correct. And using this structure, it's also really easy to add something else. So for example, if we just want to have a quick check of how large percentage of sales that these people had, we can just copy this format and then we just do percentage of sales. And we do the same thing with the formulas as earlier. So we don't need to add like separate boxes somewhere else. We can just add it in the same structure that we already have. And it will look smooth and simple. The next step of leveling up your Excel skills, which is a true step of taking you from intermediate to advanced, is to quickly and easily analyze large amount of data and add insights in the form of graphs and filters and all of that stuff in Excel pivot tables, which is what you will learn in this video over here.